back to another video here at Bob Miola YouTube channel and welcome back to the album review Saturday series. And this is the program where I take your album suggestions over off on the Instagram and I review them here at Bob Miola YouTube channel. I've had these suggestions now for the past few weeks but I've been pretty busy the past few weeks so I haven't had time to record this album review Saturday so I apologize for the long wait. But I'm here today to review all of your suggestions. So with all the bullshit out of the way, let's get straight into it. So the first album that was suggested is going to be a Meteora from Linkin Park. Linkin Park is probably my favorite new metal band out there from the late 90s and early 2000s. And I love their first two albums to death. I like a lot of their later albums a lot more than a lot of other people do, but my favorites from them are their first two albums, this one and Hybrid Theory. I think I like Hybrid Theory a little bit more than Meteora, but I think this is a fantastic follow-up to their debut album. has some of their best songs off of here and some of my personal favorites like Numb and Somewhere I Belong. Breaking the Habit is great. Easier to run faint. There's so many awesome Linkin Park tunes off of here. It's definitely hard to not love them all. I think this is a pretty consistent start to finish. And, you know, like I said, one of their best albums and some of their best tunes. And a lot of Linkin Park fans definitely agree out there. You know, Chester Bennington sounds great on here. Mike Shinoda sounds great. I really love the balance between both of them doing vocals on a lot, on a lot of songs, you know. Not a whole lot more I can say about this album that had already been said or me just praising the shit out of this album. So I'm going to leave it at that. But I had fun once again listening to this album to give my thoughts for this video. So Meteora by Linkin Park. Those are going to be my thoughts on that one. So the second album that was suggested for this video has one of the most obnoxiously long titles ever. And if it wasn't for this video, I probably would have been turned off just by the title. But the album is a nod is as good as a wink to a blind horse by Faces. I've never listened to Faces before and just the title alone made me not want to listen to this album at all because I thought it was going to be really weird. But I was pleasantly surprised by this album. I didn't love this album by any means, but I didn't hate it either. I liked it a lot more than I was expecting to going into the into this. You know, I thought the vocals were really, really done. The guitar playing was really well done. Overall, the band sounded pretty good on this album. Like I said, this was a first time listen to Four Faces before. Never listened to them before this one. And I feel like this was a good introduction for the band for me. Like I said, I, I didn't love this album, so I probably won't listen to it all that much. But I am definitely interested to see what some of their other albums are like. And if they have shorter, shorter album titles for sure. But overall, I really dug this one, and you know, it's a uh, round and equal sign for me. So, you know, uh, another good album for this series, but not one I just over, overly, overly love. But a nod is as good as a wink to a blind horse. Those are going to be my thoughts on that one. The third album now suggested is Songs in the Key of Life from Stevie Wonder. I dig Stevie Wonder. There's a number of songs I really dig by him, but not any of those actually come off of this album, although this is a very popular album from him and one that I hear a lot of people talk about. So this was another first-time listen for me. In fact, all of these albums were actually first-time listens for me besides Meteora. But I dig this album. Oh, one problem I do have with this one is I feel like it's a little, little too long. I think it's close to being triple album length. And I just think this album could have been way better as a single album. And, you know, if you take the best songs off of it, the best 10 songs or whatever, put it into one album, I feel like you would probably have a very, very kick-ass album. But, you know, a lot of people really uh, love this album quite a bit. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. Kind of somewhere in the middle. I feel like if it was a lot shorter, I would like it a lot, lot more. None of the songs off of here really stood out to me. There were some standouts, but not really any songs that I really, really liked. But like I said, I do enjoy Stevie Wonder. So if somebody threw some of these songs on or were listening to this album, I definitely wouldn't mind it at all. Because I do enjoy Stevie Wonder every time he comes on. So songs in the key of life, Stevie Wonder, those are going to be my thoughts on that one. The fourth album that was suggested is going to be Individual Thought Patterns from Death. And those who know me well know I am not a huge fan of death metal whatsoever, but Death is actually a band that I've always appreciated quite a bit. You know, it might have to do with the fact that they are one of the most popular death metal bands, 
But I wouldn't say I really thoroughly enjoy listening to them, but I do appreciate them quite a bit. I think they're one of the most consistent death metal bands out there that have put out some of the best albums in the genre, although I'm not a huge fan of them, because I know a lot of their albums just by name and cover because of how iconic they are, like Sound of Perseverance and, you know, Leprosy. There's a bunch of albums I know that I have not listened to just by the album cover and the title. You know, Scream Bloody Gore is another one. So this was the first time I ever listened to a death album start to finish. Of course, I've heard a number of their songs throughout my lifetime, but this was the first time actually sitting down and listening to an album start to finish. And I did say I would, I did somewhat enjoy it, but I didn't really love it either. One problem I have with a lot of death metal is I'm not really a huge, huge fan of growl vocals. I'm very picky when it comes to growl vocals. There's some growl vocals that I absolutely love, like Michael Ackerfeld from Opeth is my favorite growler out there. And Chuck's vocals, I'm not really a huge fan of. The standout for this album for me was the guitar playing. I thought the guitar playing and performances were very well done. There are some awesome riffs throughout, some awesome guitar solos, and some of the best guitar playing in all of death metal that I've ever heard. But, you know, the bass playing was great, the drumming was great. I would definitely like this one a lot more if the vocals weren't growl vocals, but if they were intense vocals, definitely need intense vocals. But I feel like they were all really well done, even though I'm not a huge fan of them. So overall, I would give this album and the band Death a positive review, but just not a band that I'm going to seek out a lot and one that I don't always enjoy listening to, but still think this is a good album and a good band. So those are going to be my thoughts on individual thought patterns from Death. So now we are at the fifth and final album for this video, and the last one that was suggested is The Queen is Dead from The Smiths. And this was another first time listen for me. I've heard the name The Smiths come up, you know, many, many times throughout my life, but I never really sat down and listened to them, so first time doing so. And honestly, I wasn't just super, super impressed by The Smiths. I didn't think it was a terrible album by any means. But I feel like me not liking this album a whole lot comes down to me not being a huge fan of the styles and genres on this album, you know. When I look up this album, you know, genres popped up like post-punk and alternative rock and indie rock and a lot of that type of stuff, you know, just really in my cup of tea. But I did feel like this was a well-done album for the genre and one of the better ones that I've heard. You know, listening to this album doesn't really make me want to go and check out any other Smiths albums unless I have to for another one of these videos or any other video I'm doing that happens to have the Smiths in. But overall, I feel like this was a well-done album, just not an album for me personally. So those are going to be my thoughts on The Queen is Dead from the Smiths. So those are going to be my thoughts on all five albums that were suggested for this week's Album Review Saturday. Thank you very much to the five folk that suggested this week's albums, and I hope y'all dug my takes on all of them. So be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on all five of these albums. I would be very interested to hear all of y'all's. And if y'all wish to suggest an album for a future album review Saturday, what y'all can do is follow the link down below over yonder to my Instagram. Every Saturday after I upload one of these videos, I post a question sticker on my story asking for your album suggestions. Put one per person in there and the first five suggested go up on the program. So that's how you can do that. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If y'all did, please consider subscribing to the Yellow YouTube channel and consider giving me a follow over yonder on the Instagram. I would highly appreciate the support quite a bit, and I got a lot more wicked shit coming out on both of them. So once y'all are done watching this video, blast your favorite album I talked about this week. I'm definitely in the mood to check out some Linkin Park with Meteor and listen to that again. And once y'all are done with that, go out and kick some ass.